Hi all, Marky and John here with the Exiles, and today we're going to show you how to defend yourself against someone throwing a sword. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> They're quite longitudinally rigid. <laughs> <laughs> They're not the most flexible things, admittedly. Oh, it's right in the float rib. <laughs> oh, Christ. Oh, I haven't been hit like that in a while. <laughs> That's probably the best throw I've done as well. It's going to be a fucking great ocean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> here's how you do oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like, actually do that. Just stand, just stand in front of the camera now and go, here's how you defend against yeah, the throw. Gonna... <laughs> here is exactly how you defend against someone throwing. Oh. <laughs> Hi all, Marky and John here with The Exiles and today we're going to be looking at uh, the perfect distance uh, to throw a sword, uh, which is why we've got these foam things. Uh, there is a time and a place for swords like this. Um, we're doing a lot of throwing in the last year because of social distance training and all the rest of it. Uh, and foam swords are great because uh, it reduces the risk and nobody really wants metal swords flying around training halls. Um, so I've done a video previously on throwing uh, swords, um, it's been talked about quite a lot for obvious reasons but this video is around that sweet spot, okay? Where is a good place to throw a sword from, a good distance to throw a sword from? So we're basically gonna do a very brief uh, analysis on where we feel is a really good distance to think about throwing a sword from. So in the Manuscripts of Fury, uh, we're given a couple of different positions uh, which, um, which we can throw the weapon from. Uh, in practice though, you can kind of throw it from anywhere. There's just some positions that are better than others and we're going to briefly touch on this. One of them is from the guard section of the Sword and Two Hands, um, where in fact it's a long range thrust where he's basically holding down on the pommel uh, and he's holding it in a kind of half sword in type position. Now you can throw a sword from this guard, however, really this guard is for throwing single-handed thrusts and John and I were just talking about this and he mentioned something about um, effectively when we're sword fighting your opponent quite often thinks that they're safe because if I'm in Posse de Donner and stuff it's pretty predictable yeah where I need to be to hit him <laughs> this is short uh, and so on and so forth yeah so he's got a bit of a, a bit of an idea about safety he, he understands a good safe distance so this poster just takes that away he'll be used to hanging out on the edge of distance and being able to do a long range single handed thrust just might surprise him or get him moving or something else. But from this position, is it useful to, to be thinking about throwing a sword from here? So we think not, okay? Because if John is now the thrower from that position, in practice, he may as well just be thrusting at me, okay? It's going to be a little bit quicker off the wrist, but in, in principle, I'm gonna deal with it just like I would, just like I would a thrust, so I'm gonna um, beat it, or if I'm, if I'm, if I'm two-handed and high and he's coming, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna break it, exactly what Fury tells me to do. So in practice, it's a bit too close to really be thinking about throwing the sword. Mechanically, it's gonna be no different really for him thrusting. It's certainly not gonna be any different for me um, as, the, as the person who needs to defend against it, okay? Of course, there's arguments they could catch me by surprise and so on and so forth, but we're talking in general terms, okay? Similarly, let's look at being particularly far away. All right, I'm gonna put a mask on for this. So the thing about throwing swords is quite, the main thing is about when you're defending is about not getting hit with the point, okay? But as I mentioned in my previous videos, what tends to happen is the sword will swap ends particularly if you beat or cover that weapon you'll you'll take their point offline but by by that action you'll quite often make it swap ends so even with foam swords for practice it's a good idea to wear a mask so at distance then well if i'm fighting someone and they are quite far away we'll move a further away in a second if I'm watching him, okay, it doesn't make much sense for him to throw the sword from too far away because I've got loads of reaction time. Yeah, just about. 
they, when they start to swap ends, you're catching them flat, okay, which is fine because you're not getting skewered, but it does mean that quite often the sword will wrap into you. Mm. So that's what basically happened there. So I was high, but as I've hit it, it's gone flat like that and hit you, which is a risk. I mean, it's a risk. If you've got sharp quill on, there's a problem, but yeah. you know, what can you do? So a couple of examples there, uh, straight from the manuscript, how Fury tells us to deal with the thrust. He talks about using Chingali, beating it with an offline movement. He talks about coming from Posida de la Sinestra and Posida uh, de Fenestra on the left as well. Uh, he talks about breaking those with an offline movement. So John was quite far away there, okay? If I'm looking at him, <laughs> ready, it doesn't make sense to throw a sword from that far. I've got too much time to react to it. In, in practice, it's my feet keeping me safe. Hitting it with my own weapon is, is a kind of an extra insurance policy. What you, I'll leave it in. So what you would have seen from that video is one of the risks of beating and breaking of someone throwing a weapon is that with the action of actually taking their point offline, the sword will choose that moment basically to swap ends. So you can still catch quillons, you can still catch the weapon, but ultimately you're not getting skewed with the pointy bit. And that's the bit that really matters, okay? And if you try this for yourself, you'll, you'll feel all of this for yourself. So being far away doesn't make much sense unless I'm not ready for it or I'm walking away, okay? And there are examples um, which I've read. Um, in a judicial tourney, it wasn't unusual to change weapons, okay? Uh, they would either ring a bell or call it blow a horn or whatever, and you would uh, be forced to change weapons, okay? And one of the ways of discarding your weapon is to throw it at your opponent when they turn their back to go and collect. There's at least two accounts I've read of this. So if you're not ready, of course, it makes loads of sense to throw a sword from over there, but, like my last video, the further away you're throwing that sword, the more likely it's going to swap ends, okay? It's back heavy. It doesn't want to travel with the point straight forward the whole time. So you also have to be very conscious of that as well. So let's look at this, uh, this, this sweet spot, this perfect distance. So where is a good distance to throw the sword from? Well, there's two key examples in the manuscript uh, which we're gonna talk about, and I'm gonna try and show you on the camera. So uh, both instances, we call them both just the three unwise men, but um, before the sword in one hand section, you will see uh, the guy in the one-handed poster, bring this closer, one-handed poster and he's facing, facing off against three players, okay? Uh, one is thrusting, one is cutting, and the last guy here, he is gonna throw that weapon. Now, this is a good example of not necessarily going by the manuscript because from all the way out here, He's probably a little bit too far away and we'll, we'll kind of get to why, but some of it relates to what we were just doing with the at distance throwing, okay? So I wouldn't necessarily go by this image, okay? This is an illustration of principle. Similarly, with the three companions at the end of the sword and two hands section as well, there's now with two hands on the weapon. The first guy is throwing, second guy is cutting, and then this guy is throwing, uh, throwing spears. But this guy here who's gonna be throwing the weapon and he's got his figures around the quill on to help with that, he is probably too close. From there, he would just be thrusting. And the good guy, us, Mr. Fury in this image, if we're to believe it is him, um, you know, he's just gonna deal with that like a thrust. So again, just be careful about judging this kind of thing from, from images like this in the manuscript. So we've already discussed that in a kind of standard normal, we're both in distance or with a step we can both hit each other kind of fight, it doesn't make much sense for John to throw the weapon, okay? Unless he's catching me off guard or I'm clearly not ready for it. But if we're this close, then I should be ready, <laughs> okay? So it doesn't make much sense for him to throw the weapon from there. He might as well just thrust and keep control of the weapon. We've talked about at great distance, it doesn't make much sense either. Again, if I'm ready, okay, I've got loads of time to react to it, I've got loads of time to come offline, make a defense, he also is gonna have problems keeping that thrust, uh, that throw, sorry, point on. He's gonna have problems keeping it accurate. The further away he is, the harder it is to keep it on target. So, the sweet spot is definitely not this distance. It's definitely not here. If John can make a meaningful step and hit me, he probably just wants to do that and not throw it. But, I'm still gonna be ready, aren't I? If we're this sort of distance and we're fighting, we're not gonna throw just yet, but I'm ready for everything. To me, it doesn't matter. If the point starts coming forward, I'm just gonna be dealing with it in exactly the same way. It doesn't actually matter if he's throwing or thrusting. If he's now a little bit further away to the point where even a lunge wouldn't work, okay? Not that we lunge, but you know, in this system, in this period, but even a lunge really wouldn't work from there, okay? If I'm at that sort of distance where he has to make up so much space, then a thrust start, oh, sorry, a throw starts to become a bit more viable for him, okay? 
So really the answer is, where is it practical for him? Where can he gain the most benefit? But it's also about me being ready. You see, if he's out there and we are fighting and he's at that sort of distance, he's not gonna throw it just yet, we'll do it in a second, but I'm still gonna be ready, okay? So I'm looking at him thinking, well, he's all the way over there. He can't hit me, even with a really big step and a thrust or a cut, he can't hit me, but he looks ready, which means, I need to be ready for the fact that he could throw the sword, okay? Because from there, it makes sense for him. I need to be ready, basically. The point is, I'm not gonna switch off. If he's, if he's 10 feet away and he looks prepared and he looks, and he's in a position, and that position lends itself to, I mean, obviously, if he's over there in Posse Donna, he's not gonna be throwing the sword, so I don't have to worry. But if he starts to bring that point on, dropping, even if it's a Posse that doesn't look good for throwing, if it's point on, I need to be ready, because from there, it now makes good sense for him to throw that weapon. And in actuality, I'm gonna find it quite challenging to deal with, okay? And we'll, we'll show you why now. There we go. Just about, yeah. Very close, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. no, as long as you get offline. Just outside a distance, okay? It <laughs> seems to be uh, a reasonably good place for him to want to throw the sword. Now, here's the thing. It's a risk versus return type situation, okay? I have to be prepared for him at that sort of range if he looks ready to throw that weapon, okay? Now, in many respects, John now has the advantage because when you're throwing the sword, it's an acceleration. It's a, it's a question of acceleration, okay? All he has to do is throw the arm forward, okay? He's just using hand speed to accelerate that weapon. And because he's throwing it, you know, it's accelerating more and more and more throughout the entire action until the point that he lets go of it. So it's really, really fast, okay? As someone who's defending, I have two things to do. I have to get my body offline, okay, which is a much slower action, okay? It's much quicker for him to just throw the arm forward and let go of that weapon. He's using hand speed, whereas I'm trying to bring my whole body offline, which is using my legs, okay? It's, it's a much slower action, okay? Anybody into silver will be able to tell you why. The other thing, um, is I have to throw up a semblance of defense, okay? Which is now introducing another action into the equation. Now, when he was throwing the sword there, I had to be 100% ready, okay? I had to almost anticipate the fact that he was gonna throw it. And I only saw success two thirds of the time, okay? It's a very powerful action to make, which is why we see it in the manuscript, okay? He's got a lot more advantages than people think, except going back to the risk versus return. If he doesn't land on a target, or if I'm armored, of course, he probably wouldn't throw the sword, but if he doesn't find a target with that weapon, he's given it away. Okay, so as much as he has a lot of advantages throwing a weapon, especially from the distance we did there at the end, he's also got a massive risk of losing it as well. So, uh, not exactly scientific, but hopefully the message comes across. At great distance, it doesn't make much sense to throw the sword, unless I'm completely unprepared, I don't have a weapon, or I'm walking away, or whatever. At close range, it doesn't make much sense either because he may as well just be thrusting and keeping control of it. He could throw the weapon, but I'm gonna deal with it in exactly the same way. Also, he loses some of the speed advantage as well because he's not, he's not sort of really trying to throw that weapon. He's, he can't telegraph it. He has, to, he has to send it like a thrust. It doesn't gather the same speed as a thrust coming from sort of eight, 10 feet away. So we feel that that sort of distance that we did at the end there, the sort of eight to 10 feet maybe, um, is a really good distance to think about with throwing uh, a weapon. And perhaps it's useful if you guys want to, you know, practice throwing swords, etc., cetera, et cetera, um, to think about getting really good at that distance because he's really good at this, um, as you've seen. <laughs> so uh, thanks for your time. Thanks to John for skewing me in the floating ribs and um, until the next one.